as I often say when it comes to films that are based on true events or based on a true story, you should always take that with a grain of salt because, well, they're going to take some dramatic liberties and artistic license because that's just the nature of film as a medium. As Leonard Maltin always puts it, you shouldn't be getting your history solely from the movies. With that said, let's begin this episode of Romney's Reviews. The Infiltrator is the story of a customs agent who goes undercover in order to bring down a network of bankers and drug lords, while at the same time trying to keep his personal life and his cover life separate as he gets deeper and deeper and deeper into this mystery. While the plot and eventual payoff may seem a tad predictable, the two main draws of this film are the suspense and the acting. In the case of the former, this isn't a film that's about if they win, it's about how they win. Couple that with the top tier talent that we see acting out these scenes and we're left with a pretty intense piece of drama. Seriously, if this film didn't have the actors that it did, I don't think it would be nearly as enjoyable, especially when you have certain scenes that force actors like Brian Cranston to do a complete emotional 180 in what is both an awkward and terrifying scene. That said, one thing I do dislike about the film's story would have to be the ending, specifically how a lot of the themes and ideas regarding ambiguous loyalty and lines between cop and cover starting to blur more or less just get tossed aside in favor of a simpler, happier ending. I mean, I understand that Operation Sea Chase was a success in real life, but the way the ending was executed where it just went for the simple, happy ending just felt like it kind of went against the overall themes and overall tone of the story that we had seen for most of the film. When it comes to the technical aspects, there are a few things that I feel the film falters on. Firstly, there are some lines in this film that feel that they were written to be quoted, whether it's for the trailer or to create some sort of false resonance with the audience. Now, it isn't as bad here as I've seen in other films, and a lot of the more suspenseful lines do actually add to the suspense, but there were a few times where I did turn my head a little bit and think, okay, would somebody really say this line that exact way? As for the film's visual aesthetic, the costumes and set design were designed with a fair degree of competence, but the cinematography was lacking. The shots were mostly utilitarian, just meant to move the story along rather than reinforce the narrative themes. There were a couple of times where they tried to have some unique shots, but they just didn't work. It was kind of like they matched the storyboards, but just something still felt off, and I think that might be because nothing about these unique shots actually help to reinforce the story we're being told. Overall, while the film may not be visually satisfying, it does deliver on the story. I mean, yeah, the ending's a bit saccharine for my liking, but for the most part, you're witnessing a dangerous mind game between the undercover agent and the various criminals and money launderers he's trying to ensnare in his web of cash. I mean, if you're a fan of modern crime dramas and you want to see some quality acting, then I highly recommend you check this film out when you get the chance. All of that said, The Infiltrator gets a 4 out of 5. So that's it for this episode of Romney's Reviews. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.